AUKUS is entering a new phase. What began as a submarine partnership between Britain, Australia, and the United States is evolving into a platform for developing and sharing advanced weapons technologies. The latest signal came from London, where the Ministry of Defense confirmed that the Dragonfire-directed energy laser will be deployed on four Royal Navy ships by 2027. At the same time, the United Kingdom and Australia signed a 50-year defense treaty in Geelong, worth roughly 20 billion pounds in trade, binding the two countries to cooperate more deeply in defense innovation. These two events, though separate in form, converge on one strategic trajectory, the shift of AUKUS from industrial shipbuilding to a network of shared, high-technology weapon systems. Dragonfire is the result of years of joint development by MBDA UK, Leonardo, and Chinetic under the Defense Science and Technology Laboratory. Its design represents the culmination of Britain's ambition to field indigenous directed energy weapons. During trials in 2024 and 2025, the laser disabled swarms of small drones and light targets with surgical precision. The weapon's core concept is straightforward. Use a concentrated beam of light to melt or disrupt the target's critical components. Unlike a missile, the cost per shot is almost negligible once the system is powered. This gives the Royal Navy a sustainable tool for countering drones and low-cost threats, precisely the kind of challenge that has dominated battlefields in Ukraine and the Red Sea. The technical challenge has always been about power generation and beam control. The British system integrates a high-energy laser module with a stabilized optical director and a thermal management loop to prevent overheating. Tests have shown consistent tracking and engagement at several kilometers, though the system's true range depends heavily on weather, humidity, and salt corrosion at sea. Royal Navy engineers have identified the Type 45 destroyer as the first viable platform thanks to its abundant electrical reserves. Later, the Type 26 frigate, and possibly Australia's Hunter class, could carry a derivative version once integration data are shared under the AUKUS framework. The logic of extending Dragonfire to Australia is sound. Canberra's Navy faces the same problem as Britain's, an expanding inventory of precision missiles, but limited means to deal with cheap drones and fast attack craft that can saturate defenses. A directed energy layer complements missile-based air defense and reduces expenditure per intercept. For Australia, which is investing billions in the SSN AUKUS program and long-range strike capabilities, adopting a British laser system would fill the near-term defensive gap until new submarines arrive in the 2030s. The UK's new defense industrial strategy explicitly encourages technology export to AUKUS partners, and officials have hinted that directed energy weapons will fall within the scope of Phase 2 cooperation. AUKUS Phase 2 itself is the key strategic bridge. While Phase 1 focused on submarines, Phase 2 covers advanced capabilities, autonomy, quantum sensing, undersea networks, and energy weapons. In this environment, Dragonfire becomes not only a piece of hardware, but a test case for how partners share sensitive technology. The Geelong Treaty provides a legal backbone for such collaboration, promising joint laboratories, workforce exchanges, and cross-licensing of intellectual property. Both governments see this as the model for how AUKUS can evolve beyond nuclear propulsion into a self-sustaining ecosystem of innovation. There are tactical scenarios where the technology immediately makes sense. On a Type 45 destroyer escorting a carrier group, a laser turret could intercept small drones without wasting costly Sea Scepter or Aster missiles. In coastal defense, a fixed Dragonfire battery could protect ports, depots, 
or shipyards from low-flying threats. In the long term, the weapon could pair with unmanned surface vessels to create a distributed shield around high-value assets. For Australia, these applications align with its maritime geography, long coastlines, dispersed bases, and a growing focus on defending northern approaches. The shared doctrine could become a new AUKUS standard for layered defense at sea. Yet the challenges remain considerable. Dragonfire's cost, including research, integration, and ship modifications, already exceeds initial projections. Laser efficiency still drops sharply in humid or dusty air, limiting its use in tropical or stormy conditions typical of the Indo-Pacific. Sustaining high electrical loads over long missions will demand either new generators or hybrid power systems. The weapon's maintenance cycle is also unproven under operational stress, and its combat performance will depend on how well it can integrate with radar, fire control, and data networks already overloaded with digital systems. The Royal Navy plans to resolve these issues in its first at-sea trials before exporting any technology. The political dimension is equally important. Britain's post-Brexit global posture depends on maintaining relevance in Asia through AUKUS. For Australia, collaboration with Britain diversifies dependence away from the United States while keeping interoperability intact. However, both sides must navigate U.S. export controls and the risk of shifting priorities in Washington. AUKUS is, after all, a trilateral pact whose rhythm is often dictated by American politics. If the U.S. trees slows technology release or changes focus, projects like Dragonfire may face bureaucratic friction. For this reason, London and Canberra have quietly accelerated bilateral frameworks, such as the Defense Cooperation Arrangement, to secure continuity regardless of external turbulence. Strategically, the Dragonfire story encapsulates the new shape of deterrence. Instead of building ever larger fleets, Britain and Australia are betting on precision, automation, and energy dominance. Directed energy weapons symbolize a transition from quantity to quality, from steel to photons. Their value lies not just in their destructive power, but in the message they send, technological parity with major adversaries. In the Indo-Pacific context, where China is investing heavily in electronic warfare and hypersonics, a working laser weapon within AUKUS would demonstrate that the alliance can innovate, not merely imitate. For observers in Southeast Asia, this evolution carries long-term implications. The spread of high-energy systems could transform regional security dynamics, setting new expectations for base protection, ship survivability, and industrial cooperation. Countries like Japan and South Korea are already experimenting with similar technologies. If the UK-Australia partnership succeeds, the Indo-Pacific could see a gradual diffusion of laser-based defenses across allied fleets, creating a new technological baseline for maritime security. The coming years will determine whether Dragonfire remains an experimental curiosity or becomes a pillar of Western naval doctrine. By 2027, the first four ships equipped with the system will serve as floating laboratories, gathering data for integration into future destroyers and frigates. Analysts expect Australia to observe these trials closely possibly participating in joint exercises or simulator programs through AUKUS channels. The weapon's success will depend less on its raw output than on its reliability, cost, and ease of replication. Ultimately, Dragonfire represents more than a laser. It embodies the industrial and strategic logic of the new AUKUS. 
the Alliance's credibility now hinges on demonstrating tangible results, systems that work, industries that grow, and allies that learn from each other. As Britain powers up its first laser beam at sea, Australia will be watching closely, not just as a partner, but as the next inheritor of this technology. The age of AUKUS began underwater with submarines. Its next chapter may be written in light, 